something going on which is making polling very complicated. Um, it's already uh, complicated for reasons that Chris referred to, which is the sort of uh, departure of the landline telephone as the best way to collect public opinion data because the, the landline doesn't really exist anymore. And, and, and we have a, a very difficult time getting uh, people on cell phones to complete uh, the survey. So we've looked at other methods, including the uh, panel that Chris referred to. But on top of all of these sort of technological and so societal changes that are going on uh, making this difficult, there's a movement, I think, afoot that Richard is talking about where uh, voters make up their minds in the final, not even weeks, Richard, m days of the campaign, and that's new to us. Um, it used to be that people were locked in and they sort of voted the way their parents did, and you, you know, if you picked up a shift, you could pick it up almost before the campaign started and see, that's really not true anymore. So uh, this really calls into question maybe the, the, the utility of polls, because if we have to wait till the last two days to really find out what's going on, why don't we just wait till the, the election? Um, David Coletto, I don't know if he's still around. Is he around, Jim? Is he, did he, he, he's gone? He, I don't know how many of you were uh, around last night to watch him, but I, I found it just absolutely fascinating uh, because he took us through the 2011, uh, um, no, the 2015 uh, uh, federal election step by step, and it was just remarkable to see how that, the complexion of that campaign unfolded in front of us all. And um, it was really a trip down memory lane, and he's a very bright uh, fellow. He really was testing hypotheses also along the way about why things happened, the impact of the uh, hijab, um, the impact of negative conservative ads, uh, the, the complete backfire of those ads, by the way, and uh, other things. So uh, I, I don't mean to just uh, drivel on, but um, the point is polling is now becoming uh, very difficult for a variety of reasons, and uh, these call into question uh, maybe the utility of, of polls. And, and it, it, strangely, while all of this is happening, there's more polls than ever. You know this. Um, it's incredible how many polls are out there, and I, I sort of wonder why they are, they're out here. Like yesterday, Main Street Technologies uh, came out with a survey. We, we do surveys for the media, mainly because we want to have a profile in this community where we make our living selling marketing research. So it's kind of a lost leader for us. We do it in this market to remind people this is what we do and showcase our technologies and how smart and accurate we can be. I don't know what these drive-by polls are all about. No. These companies that sort of float in and out of the scene, they're, they're clearly not here to make a commercial presence like our, our firm. Uh, that really is the reason for our firm's existence. And I'm not sure it's doing a favor to the polling industry either to have all these, these, these polls. Um, I think that the consumers, the uh, observers, the readers of the newspapers and the radio audiences are going to become bored of these polls or fatigued by them. Well, there's two, I think there are too many polls. That's the main problem. But, you know, it's interesting to hear about John Harvard. I did not know this about him. Um, but it does explain some of the hate mail that I've been receiving on unsigned stopped recently, but uh, he, um, and I'm not sure that he actually was proposing the banning of, of polls, because if you go there, and uh, Dr. Coletto touched on this last night, that it really is a very vacant kind of world. It's a bizarre place to be. Um, he says, you know, just imagine not having a poll, and there was an election in Manitoba where there was going to be no poll, and we were three quarters of the way through the campaign, and it was this weird feeling, like, what on earth is going on? And I, I don't think it's, uh, ser it serves anyone to, to be in the dark about these things. Um, I agree with uh, Mary Agnes, though, that, uh, and I guess John Harvard, uh, that um, the pollsters have to transcend or somehow get, get uh, bigger and better than just talking about horse races, because he's right. It does trivialize politics. And there's a whole story, as Dr. Coletto told us, about the campaign and why certain segments of the population were moving in different directions. And it really is kind of a dramatic story. We should know that story. And polls help us to understand the true narrative of a campaign. So the horse race, there's too much of it. And it, it does trivialize politics. And I think Mary Agnes' other point that I really take to heart is that she's not going to over us, he's not going to, going to um, overstate the value of a poll. I think the term you used a few times was hints. You're looking for hints. But even if that's the case, um, it, would, it, it tells me that these polls better be right. Because 
if, if this is sending you off into, to write a story about something and the poll, the information that you have in front of you is incorrect, that's terrible. And you can't really put the toothpaste back in the jar after that story, as in the tube, that story has been written. So I, t I take this very seriously and it would just kill me to think that we had released something that was incorrect and a journalist went and followed it up as truth. So I think there's a huge responsibility to get this right.